Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt. And today we're going to make a video comparing all the stainless steel conical fermenters. Uh, I spent some time compiling a spreadsheet similar to an uh, earlier video I made in my YouTube channel where I compared uh, all of the electric Bruna bag systems. Um, so this will be very similar to that. Check the description below with the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet will always contain um, all of the updated information as this gets as this video gets older and more systems get updated and released. I try to keep the pricing as accurate as I can and I check it every few weeks. Also, I wanna make a comment about what this video is and what this video is not. Uh, this video is not an in-depth review of all of the conical stainless steel fermenters. This is simply just a first resource someone would use when they're looking in the market for a stainless steel conical fermenter. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're watching this video. Um, also, if you notice any information is uh, inaccurate or needs to be updated, or there's a system that I need to include, uh, please put a comment down in the uh, comment section below or email me. My email is in the description. But anyway, guys, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into the spreadsheet. Okay, so this is the spreadsheet I have been working on. And if you're familiar with my electric Bruna bag video, uh, the formatting is fairly, fairly similar. Okay, so we're gonna first go ahead and talk about how to read the spreadsheet and then we'll go line by line. Um, so the requirement to meet the spreadsheet is it needs to be a stainless steel conical fermenter. So there are uh, conical plastic fermenters that did not make the cut. There are stainless steel bucket fermenters that did not make the cut with the exception of one. And I did make an exception for one called the Bucket Buddy that is not conical. I did choose to include it because it had a heating element built in and it is a very low cost uh, stainless steel fermenter. If there's any information in here that is not accurate or needs to be updated or I need to include another fermenter, let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, we're gonna go and talk about how to read it. Uh, so we have our fermenters here. We have the manufacturer of the fermenters. We have the cost. You'll see two price points sometimes with a lot of these fermenters. And that simply is referring to the different uh, gallon uh, volumes of the fermenters that are offered. So for example, the Bucket Buddy has a nine gallon option and a 17 gallon option. And then these are the price points respectively. Um, so that is how to read the cost. And that's why some of these have one price point and some of these have two. That's just because there's two volume options available. The second one is PSI. A lot of these will hold one to two PSI for uh, racking the beer over to a keg or another fermenter. I made the requirement 10 PSI and the reason why 10 PSI is so it will support pressure fermentation. Um, so a lot of these, again, will hold one to two. You'd have to check the, uh, the site out for that information if you just want to uh, do low oxygen transfers. Um, but if you're looking for pressure fermentation, that's pretty much what this, this, uh, this row is talking about. Uh, next, we have the volumes in gallons. We have heating element is built into the fermenter. We have cooling is built into the fermenter. And then we have heating and cooling options from the manufacturer. Now, I wanna make a quick note. There are always DIY options for all of these fermenters, for heating and cooling. You can use glycol chillers, you can use fridges, you can use an ink bird, you can use heating mats, you can use uh, heating wraps or heating belts. There's plenty of ways to support DIY heating and cooling. I simply wanted to include this column to talk about if the manufacturer offered a custom heating and cooling option for their fermenter, that is all this, this cell, these cells are talking about. Uh, next is yeast collection. There are some conical fermenters that do not support yeast collection, so I wanted to make a note of that. There are some valve options here as well. So for example, the Bucket Buddy has a mini ball valve with a racking arm. Some have uh, butterfly valves, some have racking arms. So again, this column is to talk about what, what valve options are on each fermenter. We have the site, uh, so that's the link to the fermenter. And then we have additional notes. The additional notes are things that I thought were important to note, but didn't fit in with the columns. So I wanted to, I still wanted to note um, as much as I could about each fermenter. So people shopping for fermenters had as much information as they could. Down here is the opinion section of what I think is the best value for low, medium, and high budget, because I do get that question often. And then I have my runner ups down here. Again, this is my opinion. I do not have personal experience with any of these fermenters. I do not own a conical stainless steel fermenter. I'm actually shopping for one. That's what really started this whole this whole research thing. Um, but I get no personal experience. The the way I made these evaluations was based on the data. So so the price points, what features were available, um, and what I what I valued. So like, can you pressure ferment? Uh, is there options for heating and cooling? 
Uh, is there yeast collection? What kind of valves are, are, are offered on the fermenter? Um, and you know, so those are all things I'm taking into consideration when I'm making my evaluation. But again, my opinion, no personal experience. I wanna just make that clear. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into uh, going line by line and talking about each fermenter. So the first fermenter on our list is the Bucket Buddy. And again, this is the only uh, fermenter on the list that doesn't technically meet the requirement. It is a bucket fermenter, but it does offer heating and we'll talk about that in a second. So it is manufactured from Kegland. It starts at $170. So the super, super nice price point. That's even cheaper than a lot of the bucket fermenters that are out there that don't have heating uh, built into it. So it's a pretty attractive price point. You cannot pressure ferment in this. They do offer nine to 17 gallon options. Heating is built in, cooling is not. They do not offer any heating and cooling options from the manufacturer. You cannot collect yeast because it is a bucket fermenter and they have mini ball valve and a racking arm available for this fermenter. Um, so here's the link to the bucket buddy. So this is the Bucket Buddy. Um, it looks uh, very similar to uh, actually a lot of the uh, cheaper electric brunibag bag systems. They essentially converted an electric kettle to a fermenter. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but uh, it makes perfect sense. The one thing I wanna note here about the heating element. So you'll notice on the bottom here, there's a ring around the side. The heating element is on the side of the bucket, which is really important because when your yeast is dropping, it's not like heating up the yeast. The, the ring here should be heating up the, uh, the actual fermenting liquid to keep it nice and warm. It does have a uh, temperature controller down here that you can manually set. So you can go ahead and check that out if you're interested. For the uh, additional notes, I just have, it is an electric kettle converted to a fermenter. It is a very low cost fermenter that had to have a heating element and the handle and a handle is available on the bottom for easy cleaning. The next fermenter is the Firm Tank from Delta Brewing. It starts at 225, and this is the cheapest a stainless steel conical fermenter that I found on the market. It does not have any pressure fermentation options. They start at 18 to 14 gallon options. No heating, no cooling, but they do have an optional heating and cooling option uh, for $300. You can buy this heating and cooling kit. So if it's important to you to have all of that from the manufacturer that is available for you for this model, you can collect yeast with this and there's a mini ball valve with racking arm and a separate ball valve. This is the firm tank. It looks a lot like a bucket fermenter, but they just added a small little uh, uh, conical shape down here with the uh, valve for uh, a yeast collection on the bottom here. For the uh, additional comments I have over here, it says it includes a thermal well and a thermometer. It has a blow off barb, uh, additional port on the lid for accessories. Um, so go ahead and check that out if you're interested in the firm tank. The next one is the SS Brew Bucket. Um, from SS Brewtech, it starts at 250, no pressure fermentation. It's a little smaller uh, uh, than the uh, the Delta Firm Tank. The uh, There's no heating, there's no cooling, and it does offer heating, heating and cooling from the manufacturer, though it is a little bit more expensive than the Delta Firm Tank at 315. Next, we have yeast collection. So you, there is no yeast collection options here, and it includes a mini ball valve with racking arm. This is the link to the fermenter. So uh, like I said, it, it's pretty much like a bucket, but they kind of added this little conical shape, but you can't collect any yeast to it. So really you're just kind of collecting the yeast down here and then you're uh, pulling the, uh, the beer from on top of the yeast cake and then you're just gonna dump the whole thing like you would just a normal bucket. Uh, but it is a conical shape, so that's why I met the spreadsheet. Over here, there's no additional notes. So that's, that's all that's included with the SS Brew Bucket. The next is called the Flex from Spike. It starts at 265, no pressure fermentation options. There is just a seven gallon option for this Flex fermenter. Uh, heating and cooling is not built in, but again, like the other ones, we do have custom heating and cooling options that are available. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested in their custom heating and cooling for their fermenter. You cannot collect yeast and there is a ball valve with racking arm available. Um, this is the uh, fermenter and very similarly to the last fermenter we looked at, it's kind of like a bucket, but they added this conical shape to it. The nice thing about this is it does offer a few different ports, like there's a large port on top, there's two ports on the side here. So it does uh, offer flexibility and customization, which a lot of Spike products do, so that's very nice to have. Um, over in the additional note section here, we have a top port and side ports available for accessories. So you can check that out if you're interested and uh, checking out the Flex from Spike. Um, the last uh, fermenter that I have on the low cost option, so just under 3, 310, is the Anvil Crucible. It's from Anvil. 
uh, which is, uh, I believe, owned by Blickman Engineering. So if you're familiar with Blickman, Anvil is, I think, under them. Uh, does not offer pressure fermentation. They have 17 to 14 gallon sizes available here, and there's no heating, no cooling, and they offer cooling from the manufacturer. They don't offer a heating option from the manufacturer. Um, so you're gonna have to DIY some sort of heating thing if you want it, but they do offer this, this cooling thing. Quick note on this cooling system. A lot of people use this system to make other options for other fermenters. You can pretty much put this in any fermenter. Uh, so it's, it's pretty nice that they offer this because it's just, it's just attached directly to the bung up here. Um, so this is very highly customizable where you can put this. But anyway, um, it does offer cooling. No heating though, that's why it's yellow. Uh, it only meets one of those uh, criteria. You can collect yeast with this. So similarly to the firm tank, you can collect yeast and it has a mini ball valve, racking arm, and butterfly valve. So this is the cheapest fermenter that has a butterfly valve available. Butterfly valves are preferred than uh, larger uh, ball valves. So we have the link here to the Anvil Crucible. And it kind of start, it's starting to look more like what you would imagine a fermenter to look like. So you have like the, the deeper conical shape, you have the larger valve here for yeast collection. Um, and then it's kind of on these like little, uh, there's little legs here to keep it nice and uh, nice and tall. But anyway, this is the uh, the seven gallon option. Uh, like I said before, there's a 14 gallon option. And I wanted to mention here, it's the cheapest system with the butterfly valve and the additional notes, but that pretty much covers the Anvil Crucible. So now we're moving into the middle tier options for fermenters, so from $400 to $600. So the first one is the SS Chronicle Fermenter from SS Brewtech. It starts at $400, a no pressure fermentation still, and we are at seven to 14 gallons for volume, no heating, no cooling, but it does have a custom heating and cooling set for 315 available um, for the Chronicle. So check that out if you're interested in a custom heating and cooling option for it. And then we do have yeast collection and it has two ball valves for the ball valves. This is the, the SS Chronicle. Uh, it's a pretty nice fermenter. It, uh, it has two uh, large valves down here. It's all stainless steel. It's got the legs. Again, it kind of looks like the Anvil Crucible in a way where it's, it looks more like a traditional fermenter. And that is about it. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Um, over here in the additional notes, I have integrated pressure release valve, um, which is nice to have for pressure fermentations. Next, we have the Blickman uh, Cornicle Unitank from Blickman Engineering. It is $400. It can pressure ferment. So this is the first fermenter that you can buy that will do pressure fermentations. And I got to say, this is probably the most unique fermenter out of all of these. And I'll go into why here in a second. Uh, so there's no heating, no cooling built in. They offer a seven gallon uh, options here and there's no heating and cooling options. So if heating and cooling is important, you're gonna have to DIY for this one. You can do yeast collection. For the valves, we have a aseptic uh, sampling with a racking arm and a butterfly valve. This is the fermenter. And you'll probably notice something right away is that this is actually a keg on top of a like conical shape down here. So the system, what the system offers is you pretty much replace your kegs with this type of keg. After your brew day, you fill up your keg instead of a fermenter, and then you put this on this um, ferment, this, this unit tank attachment. You'll ferment the beer in the keg, and then once you're done fermenting, you can just simply take your keg off and put the keg in your kegerator. I think the idea is really cool because again, you're fermenting in a keg, so this will support very, very high amounts of PSI, obviously. Only downside to this is you have to replace all your kegs with these kegs to, to really make have this make sense. Now you can just have one keg just by the system and then you'd have to rack your beers over to each keg. But I think the, the beauty of this system to really have its you know full effect and its intention is to have all your kegs, these kegs, and then you just simply swap them out, which would be cool. But yeah, that is the Cornicle Unitank from Blakeman Engineering. Um, next, we're gonna jump into the Flex Plus from Spike. It is a uh, 415. It does support pressure fermentation. There's a seven gallon option. There's no heating, no cooling, and they offer custom heating and cooling options as uh, again, Spike is big on the accessories. So you can go ahead and check that out. There is no yeast collection. In my opinion, we're getting to a price point now where I would like to see yeast collection options available. As you see pretty much from three fermenters ago, they offered yeast collection. So to, to be up in the 400s and not yeast collection is kind of a, a bummer, but it does offer a butterfly with racking arm. Again, looking at the Spike fermenter, it's very similar to the Flex. It has a few additional features though, uh, but that is the that is the 
the Flex Plus um, over here in the uh, options. We have the same as the Flex Fermenter, but the addition of the 15 PSI tri-clamp fittings at Butterfly Bell. So this is the same exact fermenter as the Flex, just so you're aware. Same exact fermenter. It just has a few other features like pressure fermentation, tri-clamp fittings, and butterfly bells. So keep that in mind if you're shopping and you like the Flex Plus option. Next, we're looking at a grandfather, the SF70 uh, conical fermenter. It is 550, it does not support pressure fermentation. The volume's 18 gallons. You'll see how this is a very large one, but I wanted to include it because, so if you're doing like five gallons, five gallon brew days, this probably is not gonna work for you. It's, there's a lot of headspace here. But if you're doing 10 gallon brew days, this is definitely uh, an option for you. Um, there's no heating and cooling. There's no heating and options, heating or cooler, cooling options from the manufacturer. You're gonna have to DIY that one. They do offer yeast collection with a mini ball valve and a, and a ball valve. This is the, the cheapest grain father that they offer, the SF70. So it has the slight conical shape down here. It's got the two valves and then it's on these legs here. Pretty standard looking stainless steel conical fermenter. But yeah, that's what Grandfathers offers at their entry level fermenters. For the uh, additional information, we have a built-in thermo well. So I wanted to include that as well. Next, we have uh, from SS Brewtech, the SS Chronicle Brewmaster Fermenter. So this is gonna be similar to the SS Chronicle Fermenter up here, except it's the Brewmaster edition. It just has additional features. So it starts at $600, does not offer any pressure fermentation. There's seven to 14 gallon options no heating. Uh, for cooling, there's a coil installed. So that's one of the features that is different with the Brewmaster Edition is that it has a cooling coil installed. You'll still have to buy the cooling system for it, like a glycol system or whatever they're gonna have, but it does have the coil pre-installed. For the uh, the heating and cooling options, there is heating and cooling options here available for you. Um, like I said, the, the, uh, the coil's already pre-installed, so you don't have to worry about that, but you'll still need the other accessories if you wanna go ahead with their system. It does offer yeast collection and it has a mini ball valve with racking arm and two butterfly valves. This is the Brewmaster edition. So another change you'll notice right away is it has a uh, digital thermometer and it has a jacket on it as well. But besides that, I believe it's mostly the same as the Chronicle Fermenter from SS Brewtech. Over here, we have a LCD thermo well with included thermo well, jacket included, and the lid has ports for accessories. Okay, so the lid also has some additional accessories to it. But again, it's the same fermenter as the SS Chronicle fermenter. It just has those three additional options. So you gotta decide for yourself, is the additional $200 worth those, those uh, extra features? Next is the CF5 a Conical Unitank from Spike. It is $600. Um, it does support pressure fermentation. And we have a seven gallon option, no heating, no cooling built in, but they do offer a custom heating and cooling um, as most, uh, as again, Spike is big on the accessories. It does offer yeast collection. You have a sample valve and two butterfly valves. This is the Spike. Uh, CF5, very cool looking fermenter. It's got the two large valves down here um, and you got the racking arm here. You got a thermometer right here. And then you have a, the lid has a few different ports up here. But yeah, it's a very nice looking fermenter. Um, so check that out if you're interested. Over here, we have a built-in pressure release valve, blow off port and hot port. And then the thermo wells included. And then there's three valves on the lid for accessories. So uh, you're starting to get uh, a lot of a lot of bang for your buck when you're getting this this uh, at the $600 price point. Um, next, we're looking at the Brewbuilt X1 Uni from Brewbuilt. It's six to seven hundred dollars. The the cheaper, the smaller, the seven gallon, the six hundred dollars. You can press ferment in this, but you have to buy a kit for it. So out of the box, out of the $600, you cannot press ferment unless you buy the kit. So I just wanted to make that clear. It is a seven and 14 gallon option. There is no heating and cooling built in. They do offer cooling. Uh, from from the manufacturer here. It does offer this cool sticks that Brewbuilt offers, but there's no heating option. So if you want heating on this, you're gonna have to DIY something for the heating. There is yeast collection. They have a sample valve and a butterfly. And then here is the Brewbuilt fermenter. It's a, just a large a stainless steel standard, uh, you know, stainless steel fermenter. Um, Brewbelt has some good stuff. They have some really fancy uh, fermenters, which we'll go into in a second. I believe this is their entry level conical fermenter though. Um, so check that out if you're interested. We have a downward facing blow off barb. Uh, the lid has a valve with one additional valve on the fermenter for accessories. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. So we have a GF30 conical from Grandfather. So this is the next step up from Grandfather from the SF70. The GF30 uh, is $700, uh, does not offer pressure fermentation, 
which is sad to see because we're really pushing into the higher price for Menors, but uh, but that's okay. It does offer some other cool features. Um, so it is an eight gallon for Menor. It has heating built in. So that's one of those cool features that I was talking about. There's no, there's no cooling, but you can buy cooling for it separately. So they do offer this cooling recirculation pump kit uh, for $65. So it's really cheap. We do offer yeast collection on this. There is a dual ball lock valve. And then this is the GF30 from uh, Grainfather. The walls, it's it's a dual jacketed fermenter. So when you actually plug in the cooling pump, if you choose to do, get the cooling pump that's separate, there, you'll see a little valve here and a little valve here. The cooling liquid actually runs on the exterior and then it gets pumped out the side. There is a heating element with a digital interface down here for heating, which is pretty cool. And then there's two tiny little valves down here for use collection. Now for the additional information, uh, it does have a wireless controller to the Grainfather app and internet. So you can control and monitor fermentation and it is double walled with built-in insulation. So again, it doesn't offer the pressure fermentation, but it has heating built in and, you, and it has a smart controller, which is pretty cool. Next, we're getting into the Blickman G4 uh, that starts at $700. You can pressure ferment in this. They have seven to 14 gallon options. Uh, there is no heating, no cooling, and they offer cooling from their site. So there's an option for that from the manufacturer. Heating would need to be DIY'd. You can collect yeast. It has an aseptic valve sampling with racking arm and a butterfly valve. Uh, this is the uh, fermenter from Blickman. So this is their actual like home brewing fermenter they would offer to home brewers. Uh, the, uh, the other fermenter, again, from Blickman is like that keg fermenter that I was talking about. So this is pretty much, the G4 is pretty much what they sell as their main fermenter. For the additional notes, uh, we have a pressure release valve on lid. Uh, there's a thermometer included with a thermo well. Uh, additional valve on the fermenter for accessories. And uh, this is the only fermenter with a sight glass. So it's got some pretty cool features for that $700 range. It is getting up there. The next fermenter to talk about is the CF10 conical unit tank from Spike. Uh, so you'll notice in the past that so we've reviewed three Spike fermenters so far and they've all been in the seven gallon range. This is the first Spike fermenter that is in the 14 gallon range. So keep that in mind if you're looking for Spike fermenters, you might have to get in the higher price point if you need a a larger fermenter. So it does support pressure fermentation. It is 14 gallons. There's no heating, no cooling, but they do offer heating and cooling custom for the spike fermenter. It does offer yeast collection. It has a sample valve with two butterfly valves. And then here is the link to the CF10. Again, it looks pretty similar to the uh, other spike fermenter we were looking at previously at the lower price point. It's just larger. It's just a larger fermenter. For additional notes, we have a built-in PRV, a pressure release valve. It's a blow off port and hot port thermo well is included and there's three valves on the lid for accessories again spikes likes their accessories so uh, if that's that seems interesting to you uh, check that link out next we're getting into the second tier for the uh, brew built fermenter is the brew built x1 uni plus it starts at eight hundred dollars it does support pressure fermentation but similarly to the x1 uni you need a kit to support the pressure for fermentation they have 17 to four or seven to 14 gallon options no heating the coil is included, uh, similarly to the SS Chronicle Brewmaster Fermenter from SS Brewtech. And then they have a cooling kit that you can buy here um, that doesn't include the coil. So it is uh, it is around the $100 $130 price point since there's a coil already installed. You just need to buy this little kit and then you're good to go with cooling. It does offer yeast collection. There's a sample valve with, and a butterfly valve. And then this is the uh, Brewbuilt X1 Uni Plus Conical Fermenter. So it's gonna be similar to the Brewbuilt X1 Uni, but again, it's one of these things where the uh, up, it's just an upgraded with uh, with additional accessories. So it's going to have the jacket, it's going to have the yeast collection kit, etc. So you're just getting the same fermenter. It's just going to have a little bit more accessories for you that you don't have to buy separately. So I, I said same as X1 Uni, but included with the cool stick. Uh, so that's the cooling coil I was referring to. And then it's an insulated jacket, trub separator, and yeast harvester. And then there's a pressure pack for serving. This is for serving pressure. Um, so you can use this as like a, uh, like a unit tank. Uh, but it is, uh, it, this pressure pack will not support pressure fermentation. So that's why I mentioned here, uh, you still need the kit for pressure fermentation. The pressure pack is just for serving or racking uh, liquids over to different vessels. 
Okay, next we're getting into the CF-15 uh, conical from a, a unit tank from Spike. This is Spike's most expensive option at $850. It is an 18 gallon fermenter. As you've been noticing, the volumes have been going up. There's no heating, no cooling. They do have heating and cooling options, similarly to the last four Spike fermenters we've talked about. So you can always get that if you want an option from the manufacturer. For yeast collection, it is available. There's a sample with two butter butterfly valves. And then this is the uh, unit tank conical CF-15. Now you'll notice it's similar to the CF-10, except again, it's bigger. Um, so that's kind of the theme with Spike, is you're getting a similar ferment fermenters with these uh, upgraded fermenters, and they just get bigger in size. So I'll say built-in PRV, blow-off port, and hot port thermo thermometer included, and there's three valves on the lid for accessories. Now we're getting into the really expensive fermenters. There's two here that I, I found that fit the criteria that I wanted to include. We have the SS Unitank from SS Brewbelt, which is their most expensive fermenter they offer at $1,089. It does offer PS10 pressure fermentation. There's seven and 14 gallon options. It doesn't have heating built in, but it has the coil included similarly to the uh, Brewbelt X1 Uni Plus. Um, there's a link here for the heating and cooling options available. We'll click on that. So it does have for $315, uh, you can get the heating and cooling option available for that. So that is available. You, do can, you can do yeast collection with this and it has a mini ball valve with two butterfly valves. Uh, this is the link to the unit tank. You know, it's similar to the other sizes and it has a lot of ports on it, uh, sampling ports, a, a digital thermometer. It's got the jacket and it's got two very large butterfly valves, which is nice for yeast collection. And then for over here, for the additional notes, it is an insulated wrap. There's a carb stone included. It comes with a shelf, pressure release valve, a welded blow off cane. Uh, there's lots of tri-clamp fittings, thermo well and LCD thermometer. So this has a ton of stuff included. And the last fermenter to talk about is the most expensive fermenter I found, and that was the uh, the Brewbelt X1 Uni Pro from Brewbelt. This is their most expensive fermenter at $1,500 for their seven gallon, uh, seven gallon volume. Uh, it does offer pressure fermentation, but similarly to the last two Brewbelt fermenters we've talked about, you have to buy a kit for pressure fermentation. Now this is pretty unique here. It has heating and cooling built in. This is the only fermenter to have heating and cooling built in. So you do not need to DIY anything. You do not need to buy anything from the manufacturer. Um, so it has that built in, which is nice. It has yeast collection available. There's a sample valve with butterfly. And then this is the Brewbelt X1 Uni Pro conical fermenter. The, the most interesting thing about this fermenter, and you'll notice that this is similar to the other fermenter we were looking at, but you'll notice that there is a thing on the side here. And that is the heating and cooling built into the fermenter. It uses this Pelter technology. I have never heard of this before <laughs> until I was doing research on this video. But uh, you can read or do some more research on this. But it, this is what is uh, doing the heating and cooling option for the uh, the cooler, uh, for the, uh, the brew belt fermenter. Pretty interesting technology. But like I said, you're paying for it uh, for $1,500. Um, that's some serious bucks for a seven gallon fermenter. So we have insulation wrap included, blow off port, uh, the Peltier technology. Um, we have heating and cooling built in. There's a mirror polish finish in the inside, so it's easy to clean. There's a built in pressure relief valve. There's a port on front and on the lid for accessories. So it's got a ton to offer here. Again, it's just expensive. Okay, so that really concludes the walkthrough. But anyway, guys, I know this is a long one. If you watch the whole thing, Thank you so much for watching the whole video. If you jumped around, that's cool too. Uh, but anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.